time, we're going to have a public hearing on this resolution. <coughs> Helbert said what this resolution does is add a $4.5 million to the original paper, which we have not gotten to yet, so that the schools will get an additional $4.5 million for maintenance dollars and CIP dollars. There's some other things in terms of the building, the preservation of the building. The basic line is that we're getting this money to the schools. Is there anybody here to speak in opposition to this resolution? Good evening, President Graziano, members of City Council. Um, first, let me start by thanking Councilman Hilbert for taking time on the holiday weekend to talk with me at length about this issue, and also uh, Suzette Denslow, who I met with for hours over the weekend, and I'm really appreciative of that. However, um, I do not believe that this is just compensation for city schools. I think that the spirit of the ordinance was that we get the total compensation of the value of properties that we surplus. I've been a strong proponent of surplusing our properties that we have because I think to find the efficiencies and to improve our schools, we're going to need to do that. However, there are many other properties that are in the hopper for us to surplus, and I'm hoping moving <coughs> forward, we have an ordinance in place that protects us from these 60-year leases at $10 transfers. It's great that we got to $4.5 million over 10 years. I don't think it's far enough. I don't think it's um, what I expect for our children. I think our children are the, are the greatest capital investment the city can make, and I would have hoped to have seen more. Uh, I'm thrilled that we are getting something, and I think it's an acknowledgement that we should have been a forethought, and I'm hoping in the future that we are not the afterthought when it comes to these deals. And I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, and thank you for coming. And to the other speakers who are speaking, we are going to be following this paper, <coughs> then we are going to uh, discuss the paper that declares a surplus in direct conveyance of this property to uh, the Economic Development Authority. So the, this paper, this resolution, merely deals with the monies to the schools. Councilman Hilbert, my name is Matthew Hilbert. Your paper's good. However, under the Economic Development the Ordinance, doesn't address the actual economic development of the business of Richmond, of the business that actually people that do the business here. You talk about money going to schools, which is great. And I think that's wonderful. But there are people in this city that need jobs. And if you do, as our illustrious mayor has done, to build that school over there at 17th and over, we build all our kids, you know, and to do things that are wrong, that thing called the jail, He'll take his uncle and he'll go and give him $150 million to build that jail. And he'll go and get contractors from outside the city to build it for us. And he'll send our money and give it to somebody and they'll take that money outside of the city. And they'll spend that money outside the city and you'll never see it again. And that's what bond secures it for. A general paper should state that they need to hire people that are in rich contractors in Richmond so that we can keep our money here, we can spend our money here, so that we can develop our city. Otherwise, we're going to go the way of Detroit. You know what Detroit looks like? Have you been in Detroit lately? That's what we're going to look like. Otherwise, you better start putting on your thing again. It isn't about attorneys and CEOs down here. It's about people who do hard work. And if you don't put it together here in this council room about people doing the work here, keeping money here, you're going to have a Detroit here. And you're going to have a real soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just would like to remind our speakers 
did not um, have a show of hands. But we have 30 minutes in total for this opposition, so please keep your remarks short so everybody has a chance. Thanks. Uh, Madam President, uh, members of council, my name is Rick Tatnell, and I'm really not sure whether I'm supposed to be speaking right now because this process is so complicated and so rushed. Mr. Hilbert, I really appreciate the work that you did to make the deal better. And you're right, it's not good enough. But it's better. But we're rushing because we told the Redskins that we were going to do this. And now, oh my gosh, if we don't get it right, the Redskins are really mad at us. Well, number one, the Redskins have a facility that they're practicing today, probably, at called Redskin Park. And they're going to be able to practice there anytime they want to, including next summer if we're not able to get this right. The West Hampton property is not the only aspect of this deal. And again, I don't know that I'm speaking to the right um, resolution, but what I am speaking to is what Mr. Persinger and Mr. Dorsey and others said, is, is the process, we're already into this now. Um, the Redskins, we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. The Redskins haven't stepped up in any way, shape, or form as far as I'm aware to say, hey, wait a minute, we understand you guys are having these problems and we realize that you're doing some good things for us, so maybe we'll do this. The administration hasn't brought anybody but Bonds of Course to this table. And I appreciate, I, I think that Bonds of Course is getting a good deal. They're getting less of a good deal, maybe, but a lot of money to use for either city funds that we're just going to be allocating in a different way, they're not Bonds of Course funds. Um, but, I'm glad for what Boston Tours can do and what they're going to do, but where's the rest of the business community? This is a great deal that supposedly is going to generate $8.5 million a year, which I think is a crock, and you all haven't decided to go and do another look. We haven't had time to go and do another look at what might that actually be. Can we get another study done? Style Wakely said that uh, the numbers done by the Chamorro Group were done haphazardly and quickly and probably weren't exactly accurate. Well, if this is such a great deal, where's the business council from the Great Bruce and Chamber? Where's their money? Where's the, 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 the money that the sponsorships, we have half a million and a half dollars that haven't been accounted for yet. Where's, where's that money going to come from? It's going to come is what we're hearing. The Redskins are supposed to do great things for us. Well, as far as I can see, they haven't done anything for us in the last couple of weeks to try to make this easier. And they don't seem to be doing, have to do anything because it's all about them. Well, it's not. This is a plot process that should be waited on. We should do this in a year. We should get it right. I like what's being done with West Hampton, but we have so much more to be done. The city shouldn't be on the hook for any of this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And I would remind the speakers that what we're discussing right now is the resolution. Mr. Gilbert worked on it gives an additional $4.5 million to the schools. This is not the paper that was introduced two weeks ago, this is an additional $4.5 million that we're giving to schools. Okay. And I would again ask you to please keep your remarks short because we have a lot of speakers. Good evening, Madam President, members of Council, Brian Byrne here. I live in the First District and uh, not too far from the school. And uh, I've been a Redskin fan longer than uh, uh, Daniel Schmidt. It's been a lot. But anyway, <laughs> what I want to say is, and I, and I hope they come to Richmond. But as far as the school is concerned, I, I very much appreciate Councilman Spielberg's uh, remarks. Uh, but I think it's difficult to predict, say, what would happen on the open market. We don't know what's going to happen at an auction until you have the auction. I can't think of a piece of property that's owned by the city uh, uh, schools that one might argue is, uh, is nicer than that piece of property. And I think it's a very valuable piece of property if the money from that property is supposed to go back into the schools. It seems to me that what the priorities are should be would be to get as much money from that property as can, as, uh, we, can we can get. I, I don't understand the big rush. I, it, it seems like we're rushing around as if, it, if it's a uh, some sort of uh, an asset that no one would want. And just because no one has made an unsolicited uh, uh, bid uh, doesn't mean that on the open market it wouldn't bring more. Maybe I'm wrong, but at least that way the citizens would know. Oh, we got what we could out of the property. The other thing is if you sell it for cash, 
You're not waiting 10 years. They have to show up with, I thought the property was assessed anywhere from 7.6 million or something like that. And I've heard figures uh, tossed around that it might be worth a lot more than that. And who knows if they're on the open market, the Moss Club might be willing to pay a lot more. But I think that what we need to keep in mind here, as much as we love the residents, is that this is a, uh, a very valuable resource uh, of the city schools. And I, for one, I'm not even sure that it should be declared a surplus. And as far as speaking out of turn, now, Madam President, looking over the uh, agenda, I'm not able to figure out at which point you should speak. So I just wanted to speak and hope that you're going to agree with these yeah, comments. I'm, I'm trying we split this out, so, we so, do it in a block, so everybody would have an opportunity. Right. And I understand the confusion, that's why I'm trying to say which each of these votes is for. But I, I would just ask that the resolution be uh, not be passed. And uh, simply so that the, the best price could be obtained for the property that would benefit the, uh, the Richmond City Public Schools and that this not be rushed. And I hope that uh, other ways can be found to accommodate for us. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chris Dorsey. Um, I oppose this resolution. I, I'd just like to uh, begin by uh, pointing out that uh, this is not an enhancement. Um, you can't uh, garnish a turd sandwich and, and tell the people that it's something good to eat. So I would like to say, first of all, that the idea that that property is worth $3 million, I think that that's already been established that's about half of what it's worth. So take the three million dollars that Mr. Hilbert wrongly assesses, misleads the public into believing the property is worth, and then add more than half, and then you'll have the actual value that everybody's throwing out before whatever, 15 or 20 minutes ago when this was introduced uh, to the public again. Um, I don't really care how much money goes from one part of a corrupt slush fund to another part of a corrupt slush fund. The uh, city and, and bonds, of course, are just exchanging the taxpayers' money back, money back and forth without the input, regardless of, of whether it goes from an insanely outrageous deal to just an outrageous deal. Um, I would also like to know, what's being, what's being done with the taxes? Is bonds, of course, going to wash this money through with their ability to not pay uh, taxes, even though it's one of the most part of one of the most uh, wealthy institutions on the planet. I'm speaking of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, um, you know, are they going to pay taxes on this stuff? Are they going to pay taxes on the money? Um, we pay taxes. It's supposed to go to schools, and it doesn't. Instead, the school the the schools are kicked out of buildings in order to make room for an institution that doesn't pay taxes saying, we'll give money back to the schools. But is the school's purpose to garner money, or is it to educate? So why don't we just sell all the school properties, and then the, the school system will have an infinite amount of money. Under that logic, it doesn't really make sense, it doesn't really add up, and the neighbors, as, as we stated, when, when this project goes through, when this giveaway goes through, that will be increased traffic, Increased noise from construction, increased crime in the neighborhood, and we don't need a beautification uh, um, uh, assistance from St. Mary's. St. Mary's is a blight on the neighborhood. We already have a clean neighborhood. We don't have trash on our streets. We don't need St. Mary's help. Don't give away any of the of the city's money or any of the city's assets to to an institution that's not even going to pay taxes on it. It's a giveaway, it's a bad deal. The Redskins and the Catholic Church have plenty of money. They don't need your assistance, but they've got it anyways because y'all are on their screen. Peace.
thing is this happening too quickly. Your your um, traditions um, to your resolution um, just came out. We just heard it this evening. I didn't quite hear all of it. I gather that the school system will have four or five million dollars over ten years. But every year, this city asks the school board to delete money. You're taking away. And this money that you're talking about is not even going to go towards the school. It's going to go for special projects. Is that what I, that's what I'm understanding? It's not helping the school. This system that I just had a granddaughter that graduated from, and every year that she's been in this school system in the city of Richmond, you have taken away money. You have decreased, decreased, decreased the budget until it's you got teachers losing, leaving, you know, have our future, our children. You know, what are you doing? Where is that money that's going to help them over 10 years? I have two grandchildren, two great grands. They be seniors. By the time at the end of this 10 years, how are they going to benefit from that? I have granddaughters that's going to the school system. How are they going to benefit from that? Maybe they might not like sports. Sports is not the only thing that's happening. We need to be thinking about educating our children and putting money back into the school system. This original property was supposed to be sold because it's surplus. Okay, we're going to pass the surplus thing. Everything, like I said to me, moving a bit too fast. I think we need to go back and rethink these things. And what is the school going to get out of that? I'm here because of the school system for our children, for our future. All of us, all of us, not just for the moment. This is for our children's future, and I think you need to rethink this thing, period. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John West, and I'm a developer in the city of Richmond. And Christopher, I'd like to address your remarks. I have been trying to purchase a lot at 2122 Hawkwood Avenue for two years. The real estate taxes have not been paid since 1974. Over $25,000 in back taxes. Friday, I went to the sir, legal... Sir, excuse me, you need to... This is not public comment period. Does he need to speak to the... Yes, I am Kathy. You'll give me a minute. Okay. On Friday, I went to the city legal department and I was told the excess property has to be put up for public auction, and 2124 Parkwood Avenue would not be put up for public auction until March. Christopher, I have not seen anything published where the Bon Secure or where the West Hampton School would be sold by the city. If it's been in the paper, I haven't seen it. If it's been on the internet, I haven't seen it. So until you publish something and let some individuals, such as a John West maybe, come forward, how do you know that the offer from these people is correct? I say that's a fallacy. If 2124 Parkwood Avenue has to be published and will be auctioned by Motley's Auction in March, not before March, after I made an offer, what is the difference between the piece of property I want and what you're giving me? So we're not going to have a back and forth again. Thank you. And also, I think I have a hundred and a minute and thirty seconds left. I'd just like to make another statement <laughs> regarding the bonds of poor. In 1952, my parents were approached to make an initial contribution to build that hospital. And the purpose was, it was for indigent care, for indigent care. And instead of six million or whatever the dollar amount that's going into the red skin pot from the bond support, why aren't you using that for indigent care? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Mr. West. Good evening. My name is L. Sherman Carter. And you know, I love the people of 
people of the city of Richmond. I don't care about their skills. Okay. <laughs> don't care. But you know my mother, her name is Judith Viola Wayton Bruton Gregory Horton. She was a she just made it through the fourth grade. And I can tell you that was one smart lady. She told me lots of times, haste makes waste. She told me lots of times, it's better to have common sense than college education. And you know, I think we need some common sense around here. Our situation in this city is that we have people who uh, don't have jobs and they've made a deal here that they say they're going to make a few jobs and they gave away some money last weekend and so all the people I know that got some money from it last weekend are down here to say, yay boy, but how much money did they give them? We are in trouble. We are in an economic situation that we don't need this. There's no way that the Catholic Church, the Redskins, uh, the U Crop group, uh, the hospital, and all this is going to get together and we're going to make sense. It does not make sense. So why would you follow something that doesn't make sense? You might as well be on let's make a deal instead of making this deal. You get more out of it even if you got some. You know, this is crazy. I'm telling you, we have to watch what we're doing. I just want to tell you what God says since we got the Catholic Church involved. It says that the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. It says where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. It says pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. The accomplices of thieves are their own enemies. We have, have played enough with the city of Richmond. We just gave away $14.2 million to a cigarette group, which should be outlawed uh, more than they do pop. But we gave them a building and a place to put it down here. Why don't you take some of this money and give it to the people that live in the city? I think they would fare better than what they fare from us just giving away money to people making up deals. They, they didn't make a deal with me. And as long as they don't make it a deal with me that's going to help me and my children, my family, and my neighbors, it's not going to help me. It's not going to help us. And it's time we stop doing this. But I know, I read these things to you, God. That's not so. You think you play? Watch what happens. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Silver Bersinger. I'm a citizen of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I'm one of the few citizens in the city that has attended all the formal discussions about this agreement. Uh, the city of 200,000 people and uh, just a handful of people have heard these discussions. I've been in more meetings about this than some members of the city council. Uh, I'd like to uh, address this paper, the enhancements. Uh, really, uh, it, they should be called concessions. Concessions from the administration because that's largely where uh, most of the money comes from. It comes from just uh, Re, uh, redirecting taxes and dedicating it to schools. Mr. Hilbert, kudos to you for uh, negotiating something a little better, but this whole bill still stinks. Uh, the, first, uh, the first part of this agreement, actually, Bob Cruz is, is doing, contributing a little more, a million dollars over 10 years, I guess payable in $100,000 per year installments. Uh, says uh, these projects would be in addition to, but separate from the annual lease payments made by Monsecours, in addition, the project would be related to the mission of Monsecours, health, fitness, anti-obesity, etc. Best advice City Council could give to uh, parents is, don't let your children drink soft drinks, nor play football. It's a major source of concussions and can lead to death. Uh, this is a little misleading here. Uh, it says Monster Cruz will pay an uh, annual lease amount of $33,000 a year. That's up from the previously discussed $5,000 a year, but previously they had said they would maintain the field at their expense. Now they are paying $28,000 a year for the city to maintain the property. Uh, the city's dedicating uh, $288,000 uh, for the next 10 years. Uh, from the real estate taxes on the West Hampton property and $32,000 a, a year for 10 years on uh, non-real estate taxes. Uh, number nine, I, I oppose this, the 
year lease, Madam President, can you tell me of any other long-term lease like that that the city has with a private entity? You may not be able to do so, but Ms. Jane for Ferrara may be able to. I think that is exceptional, and uh, we should not do that. Uh, the city's also dedicating $195,000 a year. That's that's supposed to be the city's take on that eight and a half million dollars. It's supposed to come from 100,000 people visiting. I don't think those 100,000 people are going to come to visit. That statistic was from wherever they had their camp now, it's either in Northern Virginia or Maryland, which is the, bay, the fan base for the team. And uh, the city's also getting $60,000 a year for the Lee Street site, and that's uh, going into the school's program. Uh, you know, uh, down here, if one final note, the EEA is uh, going to make the, the fields available to public schools uh, for a number of days. You know, the EEA, they're contributing $150 million to this project, and I would prefer to see that money spent on local businesses. Thank you for the opportunity and comment. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Carol Lee Orson. I'm the Director of
for three years we had known that the school was um, vacant um, and we had asked the community for a public bid process to be open on that school with every meeting that we've had. People have been concerned about the dilapidation occurring to that site. It has not been overlooked by the neighborhood. The neighborhood has been very aware, which is why the lead council member Tyler had been um, in the process of proposing a public bid proposal process for the site. We are very concerned and we have been very concerned. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And now, at this time, is there anyone to speak in favor of Mr. Hilbert's resolution? <coughs> And I'm going to ask for a show of hands because I think we'll move this to two. And actually, I hate to say this, but the last time I asked for a show of hands, after we got through the people who had a show of hands, then ended up four more people jumped on the line. We were just trying to keep this within time constraints. So we have one. All right, I'm going to give this two minutes each, Mr. Clerk. Everybody gets an opportunity. Can you do that, Mr. Clark? And this is, we're going to have another paper that discusses the South Hampton site, I mean the West Hampton site, and the fact that it will be conveyed to the EPA. What we're discussing now is Mr. Gilbert's resolution. So everybody has that clear. Okay. Yes, President Graziano, uh, members of the panel.